Welcome everyone to Music of the Mountains Jindo Dog Journeys. Today we are going to be doing a new music review of the new Ghost album, Impera. And uh, I have a partner with me today. This is the Jindo Dog. I uh, have just recently kind of got on the ghost train, so to speak. I have not been that familiar with their back catalog. I have heard a couple of songs here and there uh, over the course of their 10, 12 year career now. And I will say that I probably haven't been uh, overly impressed with some of what I heard based on the distraction sometimes that was created by their image. Um, However, I've gotten over that recently, and I've come to realize that this isn't much different than what Kiss was doing back in the 1970s when they were wearing makeup. Um, so when I've heard some of the first couple of singles that came off the new Ghost album, uh, I have been extremely impressed. And so... My partner and I would like to spend some time discussing Impera today. She's also a relatively new fan of, of Ghost. But anyway, this album was recorded uh, over the course of 2020 and 2021. Oh, there she goes. Maybe she'll come back in a minute. Maybe she can want a treat. The album was recorded in Sweden, and it was also recorded, well, actually it was only recorded in Sweden, uh, but it was also mastered in Nashville. Uh, now, who do you have in Ghost? You have the main uh, arranger, songwriter, lead vocalist, Tobias Forge, who's gone by many different stage names over uh, the course of their career. and. Uh, you also have different supporting musicians. I suspect that there's been a lot of different uh, musicians going in and out of the ghost camp through the years as far as recording and touring. Um, we don't know their names because uh, in the whole production of Ghost, the supporting musicians go by nameless ghouls. That is their name. Uh, so it's pretty much Tobias's project, his band, he's the leader, he's the visionary. However, on this album, Frederick Atkinson, the excellent guitarist from fellow Swedish band Opeth, uh, performs a sizable chunk of guitar on this album. And that's uh, something that I really enjoyed. So... Going through the tracks briefly, we have, uh, well, if you have the vinyl, you have Side A kicking off with Imperium, which is a short instrumental that reminds me a little bit of Thin Lizzy or maybe some early Metallica, old mid-1980s Metallica, uh, twin harmony guitars uh, immediately will get your attention. And then after about a minute and a half of that, it goes into the first track with lyrics, which is called Caserion, assuming I'm pronouncing that right. And this is a, a just a thunderous track that is going to also grab your attention. I really like it a lot. Um, excellent uh, piece of music, great, great production. Um, all the instruments sound good and clear. You, the levels are nice. You can hear everything. Uh, at least on this vinyl version, you can. I don't know how um, some people who are like nitpicky and have the audiophile mind feel about um, the CD version. I don't know. Anyway, from there, we get to maybe one of the um, catchiest songs on the album in Spillways. This track opens up with this nice twinkling piano that immediately 
uh, triggered thoughts of the song Searching for Celine by Blue Oyster Cult from Blue Oyster Cult's 1977 album Spectres. Uh, very reminiscent of that. And many people have uh, um, compared some of Ghost's music to Blue Oyster Cult. In fact, that Tobias has a voice that is very similar to some of the Blue Oyster Cult songs that Buck Dharma uh, sings in Blue Oyster Cult. And I can see that. I would not disagree with that for some songs. Definitely not all, though. Anyway, Spillways... Uh, we will see if this will be released as a single. It certainly sounds like it has enormous single potential uh, in it. After that, we have Call Me Little Sunshine. This is one of my favorite songs on the album. I believe this was um, their first or second single. And uh, it is a moody, atmospheric uh, song. I just love the moody guitar that little lick that starts the song off and reappears throughout. Uh, the song is fabulous, so infectious. Uh, their songs are very memorable. Uh, they will claw their way through your ears and into your brain and colonize it. Uh, and that is, that is a sign of real power in music when you are affected by it to the point where you just can't get it out of your mind. It's like glue or cotton candy. It just gets stuck to your to the inside of your skull. Um, and a lot of the material on this album has that quality to it. Um, Call Me Little Sunshine is one of those songs. From there, we go to Hunter's Moon. This may have been the first single, as a matter of fact, that they released last fall. It has a little bit of um, 1980s era Van Halen to it with some of the uh, guitar pieces, the palm muting on on uh, higher up on the on the uh, fretboard, and the guitar brought back some of uh, those memories for me. Great song, um, and then if you have the vinyl, side A finishes with the song Watcher of the Sky. What do you think? Is that your favorite song on the album? It might be mine. Um, Watcher in the Sky is fabulous. It's one of the heaviest songs on the album and uh, just has such a memorable chorus. Big, loud, grind, uh, grooving guitars and bass. Excellent rhythm. Very memorable. As we go into side two on the vinyl, and there's the back cover. Very cool artwork. Uh, we start off with another little instrumental sketch called Dominion, and this is very brief, and then it quickly flows into another song they released as a single called Twenties. This is a very interesting song, quite a uh, production, and it, uh, I don't know, it almost has like this Broadway feel to it. I hear uh, elements of what Queen would do with some of their music, kind of big, over-the-top productions, theatrical. It's got a very theatrical sensibility in it. Uh, the song has historical references, I believe, um, from what I was reading to some events and social conditions of the 1920s. However, um, picking apart the lyrics, it would also have some relevance to what's going on here in the 2020s, and it might become an anthem uh, that society will pick up on uh, for this decade. Who knows? It's actually a song that, I must say this, and it's not really something I would like by uh, most bands if they tried this, but um, I think because they do such a good job and, and it brings back some of that theatrical um, element that Queen had at times in their music, I think that's why I like it and say it's a good job. What do you think? Well, she likes it too. So moving on, we uh, go to Darkness at the Heart of My Love. Another good song, very strong. After that, we go to Griftwood. This is another song that has some guitar playing that is reminiscent, uh, in my mind anyway, to uh, Old Van Halen. Uh, really liked the song a lot. 
a great chorus. Um, there's also this element of big 80s arena rock, big anthemic sound to it, something you could have heard um, at a big arena rock show sometime in 1987, for example. But it's not a cliche. None of this stuff is a cliche. And when I'm citing some of these uh, associations with bands from the past that uh, these ghost songs trigger in my mind, it's a compliment and it's not overly derivative at all. And that's what I like. Um, from there, we go to the last little instrumental segue on the album, which is called Rite of Passage. Uh, just another brief uh, little guitar piece that has um, some nice textural guitar to it that reminds me of 1980s Queensryche um, that I really liked. And then this segues into the last song on the album, um, Respite on the Spittlefields. Quite a title. Uh, this song also has some some Queensryche-isms in it, too, um, to my ears, anyway. Really liked it. And it ends with just such a very sublime, memorable um, outro guitar where it fades out slowly over the album um, at the end. Great, great piece of music. So there you go. Um, Ghost, Emperor, fabulous piece of music. Again, I was late getting on the Ghost train, but uh, consider me a fan. I'm very impressed with the material on here. Um, my dog is. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. Let me know what your dog thinks of the new Ghost album. I really want to hear from uh, all the canine owners out there and see what their dogs think of it too. Right? Right. <laughs> anyway, um, if you are someone who uh, is not that familiar with Ghost, uh, this thing is really selling well right now um, from what I read. This might be a great album to um, uh, get introduced to them by, so to speak. Uh, it's almost like uh, pop music for old metal heads, <laughs> sort of like myself, or... Uh, easy listening metal music for pop aficionados. I don't know, but it, it, it is just catchy, memorable um, rock and stuff. So anyway, that's Ghost Emperor out now. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what your dog thinks in the comments. She likes it, so you know it's gotta be good. Huh, huh, all right. Well, that's it for now. Take care everyone. We will see you again.